great results can be achieved with small forces. Fighting with a large army under your command is no wise different from fighting with a small one. It is merely a question of instituting signs and signals. The worst calamities that befall an army arise from hesitation. If you fight with all your might, there is a chance of life, whereas death is certain if you cling to your corner. Regard your soldiers as your children, and they will follow you into the deepest valleys. Look upon them as your own beloved sons, and they will stand by you even unto death. If you do not take the opportunity to advance and reward the deserving, your subordinates will not carry out your commands, and disaster will ensue. One mark of a great soldier is that he fights on his own terms, or fights not at all. A wise leader always considers gains and damages in his decisions. Move not unless you see an advantage. Use not your troops unless there is something to be gained. Fight not unless the position is critical. When one treats people with benevolence, justice, and righteousness, and reposes confidence in them, the army will be united in mind, and all will be happy to serve their leaders. It is easy to love your friend, but sometimes the hardest lesson to learn is to love your enemy. Do not engage an enemy more powerful than you, and if it is unavoidable, and you do have to engage, then make sure you engage it on your terms, not on your enemy's terms. One need not destroy one's enemy. One need only destroy his willingness to engage. To lift an autumn hair is no sign of great strength. To see the sun and moon is no sign of sharp sight. To hear the noise of thunder is no sign of a quick ear. A good commander is benevolent and unconcerned with fame. Treat your men as you would your own beloved sons, and they will follow you into the deepest valley. Quickness is the essence of the war. He who is prudent and lies in wait for an enemy who is not will be victorious. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. All warfare is based on deception. Hence, when we are able to attack, we must seem unable when using our forces, we must appear inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make them believe we are near. The whole secret lies in confusing the enemy so that he cannot fathom our real intent. In battle, there are not more than two methods of attack, the direct and the indirect. Yet, these two in combination give rise to an endless series of maneuvers. When strong, avoid them. If of high morale, depress them. Seem humble, fill them with conceit. If at ease, exhaust them. If united, 
separate them. Attack their weaknesses. Emerge to their surprise. If you fight with all your might, there is a chance of life. Whereas death is certain if you cling to your corner. Water shapes its course in according to the nature of the ground over which it flows. The soldier works out his victory in relation to the foe whom he is facing. Disorder came from order. Fear came from courage. Weakness came from strength. If fighting is sure to result in victory, then you must fight, even though the ruler forbids it. If fighting will not result in victory, then you must not fight, even at the ruler's bidding.